All right, guys, I'm back from the Bahamas and I had an awesome time. Uh, thank you for watching and coming along with me. In today's video, I will be talking about my safety equipment, my first aid kit equipment. Um, a lot of my viewers have been asking me in the past uh, about some items and I wanna talk about what I carry on my safety equipment. And since I navigate 90% of the time by myself, there's a lot of things that I think of that could happen. And I wanna show you guys what I carry for my safety if something happens to go wrong, what I carry in my first aid kit, and um, also other things for safety if the engine breaks down uh, at sea. And this is the most critical items that I have on my boat. I got my first aid kit. I have a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. I'll show you how I use that if I need to use it. Also, if the boat is adrift at sea, even though I have the Minn Kota, which the Makota can stay me put, but if it gets really dangerous, like 15 foot seas, and you lose engine power, this is a drift parachute control. It keeps your boat bow first. And the most important thing that I use is all this communication that I have in my life vest, and I'll show you how everything works. All right, and I'm gonna show you what I have in my first aid kit. Since I'm alone out there, what is very important to me, this is what I carry in my first aid kit, golf, stop bleeding, a lot of bandages, scissors, normal stuff you have on a first aid kit. But something really important that I have here that I wanna share with you guys is this reinforced skin closures. If you have an open wound that is really bad and it's open, you can use this reinforced skin closure. This can happen. You could be out there by yourself, you start bleeding and you need to control your wound. If it's possible, uh, grab this stitches this stitch is right here will close your wound. So if you have a big wound, you can just close it yourself with this stitches and get some golf on it, close it up, and uh, stop the bleeding, right? Uh, that's something very important. This is a lot better to have than a sewing device to sew your skin, uh, which is that's gonna be really, really painful, right? You're already in pain. Um, I have done some of that before, small items. So this is really important to have, reinforced skin closure. Very important to have on your first aid kit if you have a big open wound. And of course having tweezers for anything that could happen. And I also carry several of these sterilized gauze pots. Very important to have. I have medium ones, I have large ones. Always good to have it. So my first aid kit is packed up really good with a lot of stuff and a lot of different size bandages on the first aid. But the most important thing that I carry here, it is those stitches that I show you that could close up a wound and help you stop the bleeding. And something very important for most of us that sail or boat by ourselves, and if our arm, leg, or anywhere in our body starts bleeding, like we can't control it, right? We have to be able to control that bleeding so we can get assistance. Because if we don't, we're gonna die. That's just, being alone out there, you need to be able to control your bleeding if something happens. I am hours away from civilizations. By the time I call for help, a chopper or a marine boat, by the time it gets to me, it's gonna be a long time. So, for that, I wanna show you something very important. This is a one hand tourniquet. So let's say I got bitten right in this arm or my fillet knife, I'm not that good for laying. I cut myself and I'm bleeding out of control out of my hand. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna use the belt? The belt is not gonna attach. It's good, especially when you're using only one arm. So the tourniquet is an awesome device to have on your boat. It's a one hand tourniquet for you people that are alone on the boat. This is awesome. The way you use it is simple. You can use your teeth and pull this, right? Pull this like this, use your teeth. Now with the other hand, I can use my teeth because I have my mask on. All right, so very simple. You open it up, you have it like this. You're bleeding to here, severe wound right here, shark bite, right? Tiger shark Just went crazy and begged your hand when you were spearfishing. Right now, you put this over here. If the wound is here, you want to close right up here, right? You see this? That's it. Now. I remove this part right here and you twist here until you feel that the blood is being clogged. And then you put this right through here. 
See how my veins are getting all puffy? I'm gonna release a little bit of the pressure just to show you. Okay, release the pressure right now. So now you have pressure enough and it's good to put the time here for medical purposes. It's good to know how long you had the tourniquet on uh, because remember, you're not getting blood in your extremity, you could lose your arm. So medical experts will wanna know what time you put the tourniquet on. Right there, and the tourniquet is activated and the bleeding will stop from your extremity here. It could be your leg. If it's on your leg, you put it right here. You put it in a place that is going to block your bleeding. Never put it on your knees because it's not going to block your bleeding on your knees. It's a bone structure here. So you have to put it in this extremities or on your leg on the bottom. If you have something on your foot that is bleeding. So if it's here, you put it here. You never put it on the joint. If you put this on the joint, it's not gonna work. You got bones here, tendons, it's not gonna close up. You gotta do it up here. And if you cut down here on your arm, you wanna put it right up here too. And I'm not a doctor, but that's what I know to survive. This part goes up here, the red part, Velcro's in. And that's it, it's ready to be used. For the next time, just open it up. Put your extremity here, and that's it. Very simple to use. Very important piece of safety device that I have, especially that I'm by myself out there. This will really save my life because if I bleed on control beat, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna close the wound? How? So this is gonna bite me maybe one, two hours, maybe three hours, uh, not to bleed to death, right? Very important. And remember, once you're bleeding, your body cannot handle it anymore. You're gonna faint. You can't continue forward. And I'm alone. I have nobody else on the boat, right? So by having nobody else on the boat, that is it. No more communication. And right before an injury that I'm bleeding out of control, the first thing I want to do, if I see my life is going to be in danger, is going to be press the SOS on the Enrich Mini. And also I have the personal locator beacon that I can just release the antenna, press the button, and call for help right through here. That's the first thing I will do if my life is in danger before... Um, I start doing anything, right? This is first to do, get communication, get help quick uh, before you start doing anything else because by the time you start closing your wound or doing any blood control, help will be on its way so you don't waste any time. Every minute is really valuable. You want that help to be called as soon as possible. And of course, a lot of people ask me, hey, what happens if you fall off the boat, you're by yourself? Remember, this is my kill switch right here. My marine kill switch, right? Remember when I say prop clear and I look back so nobody gets injured in the back of the boat with a propeller on the boat? I press this right here. You see that light there? Okay, that blue light right here is telling me, and the green light is if I get submerged on the water or I drift away a little bit from the boat, this will shut the engine off. Um, it loses contact with the antenna in here. So if you get far away, 30 to 60 feet away from your kill switch, electronic kill switch, um, it's gonna shut off the engine because it needs contact with this all the time. If it loses contact, it will shut off. So that's another piece of safety being by yourself. And you can attach four of these on a pet, on humans. Anything that falls off the boat is going to alert you that something went wrong. If you have a twin engine or a single engine, this kill switch will work, will kill your engines, and you can swim back up to your boat and the boat is not gonna pilot by itself uh, and leave you behind. So really important to have electronic kill switch. Even if you were people, having an electronic kill switch is excellent because a lot of people sometimes are not paying attention. And when they look back, hey, little Timmy's missing. Where's Timmy at? I don't know. He was there four minutes ago, right? Four minutes ago, he could be already four miles three miles behind the boat, right? So very important. Uh, if you don't have visual contact with your crew, very important to have a wireless kill switch on your boat. And it's not that expensive and it's a great peace of mind to have on your boat. Like for me, it's a must to have on the boat. All right, so let's talk about now, let's say if I'm in the middle of the Gulf Stream and there's 10 foot seas, the engine decided to stop working. That's it, I got no engine. Now the problem with that is if you have eight, six or 10 foot seas, what's gonna happen? Your boat is gonna go 
sideways with the waves, right? So your boat is going to be like this sideways, landing side to side, very uncomfortable, dangerous. It can sink your boat, right? If you're going sideways, side to side, there's no way to strain up those waves, right? On your boat, you're always going to continue going side to side. Well, the parachute, you can tie it up to the front and the front is going to go and find where the wind is pushing. And now your bow is going to line up with the ocean, right? So now your boat is not going to go side to side no more. And also, the wind is not going to push your boat as fast. Let's say there's about 20 miles per hour winds out there. Your boat is going to be drifting a lot faster. If you use the parachute, it's going to keep you put probably 50%, right? If you didn't have this, it's going to push you 100%. This is going to slow you down probably 50%. Never used it. But it's always a safety device to have in your boat, uh, especially if you're single engine or if you're double engines. First, some people use this device to go fishing to keep the bow of the boat lined up. And also, the wind is not going to push the boat that far, right? So this is an awesome device. I wouldn't open up in here. It's really big. It's a parachute. And it's really wide. It's a cone. And remember, where I navigate, the depth is not 100 feet. It's 2,000 feet and plus going down, right? So there's no anchor that you can deploy there. So this is a must on those deep waters to help you keep you in place. So this is something that I always have on the boat. Something like that happens, I can deploy this. I also have the Minn Kota that I can deploy. But like I said, if it's 10 foot seas, forget about the Minn Kota. The Minn Kota is not going to help you. Minn Kota is not going to keep up. As a matter of fact, it's not going to be touching the water. It's going to be up and down and it's not going to do anything. So this is a must for me to have to keep my boat in line if my engine quits and the reason i want to share this with you guys is to show you how prepared you have to be out there uh, even if you're not alone you got to be prepared out there for the worst remember we're out there swimming on the water even if you're with people a barracuda or a shark can bite you you can bleed out of control by the time you get help it could be too late so having a tourniquet and learning how to use it there's a lot of videos in youtube that shows you how to use the tourniquet so you may want to check those out also and of course the stitches that i showed you very important they don't come with any safety kit you buy those separate i will place the link in the description below of those strips very important to have if you have a cut you can put the stitches yourself and that will help you pilot the boat to safety uh to a marina or a hospital or until you get rescued burn control tool if you get burned fire on your boat or you can get burned on the barbecue remember i'm frying with hot oil I'm always really careful. So you always have to have something to help you with burn control, right? That could happen on the boat. First aid is very important. Uh, don't be cheap on the first aid because when you really need it, this could save your life or somebody else's life. And remember, this is not optional. This is mandatory by US Coast Guard to have a first aid kit. The tourniquet, this other thing here, and personal locator, communicator, Coast Guard is not going to give you a fine because you didn't have that. It will give you a fine if you don't have this. This is mandatory to have a first aid kit. But those things that I show you, they're extra protection. Even if you're five miles away from coast, if you start bleeding or anybody on your boat start bleeding uncontrollably, you want to be able to control that bleeding because by the time paramedics come, it could take 20, 30 minutes, even an hour to get a paramedic. All right, guys, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I will place the link in the description below, my whole first aid kit on the description below. If you want to check it out, if you want to get any ideas to buy something for your boat, uh, you can get something similar, something better. And if you have used any of this equipment in the past, please, on the description below, let us know how any of this device that I'm showing you now or more devices that you can recommend for safety that I must have on the boat. Please let me know. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And please always respect the ocean and always have extra caution when you are there, especially by yourself. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and always navigate safe, you and your family.